Hi, I'm, I'm Peggy Farron. Welcome to the Understand Photography Show, where we talk about travel, nature, and fine art photography. Today we're going to be talking about putting together a good art portfolio, one that will help you sell your art. So Heather Musingo and I are going to be talking about that. The Understand Photography Show is a podcast, so please listen to us on iTunes or Spotify or Stitcher, however you listen to podcasts, and if you would leave us a review on iTunes, boy, we sure would appreciate it. But that the reviews on iTunes, reviews are great anywhere, but on iTunes help us. They help us get, come up in the search engine, so we really, really appreciate it. Heather puts a link right in the show notes on understandphotography.com, so all I gotta do is click on that link and leave us a review. Hopefully you like the show. We try to, it's a teaching show, so we try to have educational content in every single show. Um, our Facebook group, by the way, we have two Facebook groups. So if you go to facebook.com slash understand photography, we've got one that's a general photography group called Understand Photography Group, and that is where you will you know, post, share pictures, ask questions, ask for critiques, what kind of lens should I buy, what am I doing wrong, how could I make this a better picture, whatever. That's kind of where you put that stuff. The other Facebook group is called Selling Your Photography as Art. So this show is going to be good for those of you interested in that. And that, in that Facebook group, we talk about, how do I sell my art? Oh, and some people are like, I made my first sale at a gallery. How'd you get into the gallery? That leads to all that kind of stuff. So it's a support group for artists, for f photography artists. Facebook.com slash understand photography. And you'll see it says groups or something. You can get to us that way. So today, Heather Musingo, our executive producer here at Understand Photography, and I are going to talk about putting together the portfolio. Now that kind of is the first step to getting to selling your art. And it's a step that everybody seems to want to want to skip. <laughs> and so I'm going to I'm going to turn it over to you, Heather. All right. And you can ask the questions and I'll be Thanks. the but you can help me. Yes. Because Heather is an artist in her own right. Now she's not a photography artist, but she is an artist painting, Painter. drawing. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's start with what is the art portfolio? Okay, well, your art portfolio is a collection of your work, but it's not just a collection of your work. Because one of the problems that we have as photographers, and believe me, I have this problem myself, we like to take pictures of everything. Oh, I'm a landscape photographer, I'm a wedding photographer, I'm a portrait photographer, I'm a wildscape, I'm wildscape? <laughs> wildlife. Wildlife. <laughs> I am into infrared photography, I'm into macro photography, I'm into all of it. I really, really am into all of that stuff too. Anything you can do with a camera. I love photography and I love to take pictures of everything. So I can't put all that out and expect to sell my art because you know what that does? It confuses people. Right. Um, one, it, it's the main problems. It's the main problem we have as photographers is somebody goes to our website and we don't have a look. We have so much stuff on there that they're like, well, these are pretty pictures, but gosh, this is weird. It doesn't really fit. And they, don't, they might not think it consciously, right? but it's there. And oh my God, there's so many pictures on this person's website. I don't want to go through so and, many. You know, they categorize them into galleries, but then there's 30 different galleries, a separate one for each city they have visited and a separate one for landscape and a separate one for birds and other wildlife and other this and other that. And you just, you don't know what they're about. You never want to confuse your customer, never. So your portfolio is really important. You've got to have a look and that is really hard for us as photographers what is unique and different about your work so that's the goal of your artist portfolio so that's what we're going to talk about today All right, right. Yeah. <laughs> so why is it beneficial for helping you sell your work okay well the main thing we just talked about you don't want right. to confuse your customer yes. right but you also you also have to have that that special something that makes you stand out because why should they pay two thousand dollars for your big piece when this guy around at the flea market sells something very similar for two hundred dollars right you have to you have to kind of establish your niche establish your name 
and it all come it all it all begins with the portfolio it does all right so the four components to making a saleable art portfolio you mean a portfolio that's actually going to get the attention yes. of a gallery owner or a customer or something like that something okay. that will make your brand name it's you okay your portfolio well the first thing is it's you've got to find your niche now this actually could have been a sh whole show on its own maybe we've had a show like I this i did, don't know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway but finding your niche is hard for us as i said it doesn't have to be oh i'm a wildlife photographer it could be i'm a wild photographer wildlife why can't i say wildlife today a wildlife photographer who uses textures in photoshop and has a burnt something what's the burnt what word am i looking for burnt orange burnt something yeah. burnt sienna how burnt about that sienna. burnt sienna tint to my pictures do you know what i'm saying yeah. it, it's you can't i mean you can say i'm a wildlife photographer but everybody's got a picture of a bird everybody's got a picture of a raccoon something that makes it yours and usually that's something it's, it comes from an emotional in yourself like you gotta I love doing this you really have to put yourself into it and I think that's how you find your niche like look at it I, I think that's how art some that people find their niche okay I, I tend to not be a real emotional person at times, especially about my photography. And that, when people say stuff like that to me, it doesn't work for me. You know, it works for it does work people for who are very yeah. more, you know, probably more creative than me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm probably more of a left brain person. But for me, it was just trying a bunch of stuff until I found something that's that I liked yes and that's sold I couldn't I didn't find it in fact the way that I found my niche and I, I I'm sure the audience if, the, if they're regular listen listeners have heard this story before but um, my studio is in an area that's a redevelopment area so the government puts money into this area and they try to attract artists well, I didn't know that when I got here, but anyway, um, in 2009, I was like completely broke. My portrait business just sort of went away like not like so quickly. It was unbelievable. And I get this note. It was a flyer, I think, in my door. And it said, you know, everybody in the uh, Bayshore Arts District or redevelopment area, I guess it was called at the time, we're going to have this you know the first of many art shows which I think they only did one <laughs> <laughs> that's a good idea but if you were if you own property in this area you could get a free booth I thought okay well I'm gonna start selling some artwork and but I was a wedding and portrait photographer I didn't have any artwork and you can't sell people you know oh here's the wedding phot right. photographs of somebody else <laughs> so you know I had four months to to decide what to do and so of course I waited till the last minute mm -hmm. and I remember my nephew was probably 11 or 12 years old and it was really cold it was January and it was one of those really cold windy days and I'm like I have to go create some art like what am I gonna do I this show is coming up I signed up I have a booth and they paid for everything they paid for the tent and everything wow. I was so lucky because what a great way to get into it the only thing I didn't pay for was fire ant removal, by oh, the way. Whoops. So I had a booth right on top of fire ants. That was great. And that was lots of fun all day. Anyway, um, so my nephew, I don't even know if he came over. I, I said, come in with me. We're going to go create some art. So I took my infrared camera, which I used in wedding photography, and my fisheye lens. And we went to the beach, and I'm like, what am I going to say? And it was cold and it was super windy. So first it was, actually when I first got there, I was doing infrared stuff of the palm trees. And then as the sun started setting, I went to the, out to the beach and started doing infrared, I mean not infrared, I'm sorry, fisheye uh, sunsets of the beach, mm -hmm. which one of them came out so cool because it was it was really windy, so that there was all this froth at the the waves at the mm -hmm. you know the 
what do you call it, a wave when it comes up on the shore? Yeah. Yeah. I, that's still one of my favorite pieces I've ever made. But that's and not what cool. I went into. I went in more into the infrared stuff because guess what sold? The infrared stuff. And guess what got me hooked on infrared? <laughs> Making a sale. <laughs> Making a sale. I couldn't believe I made money on my first art show. Of course, it didn't cost me any money to be there other than printing the, the stuff off. Right. But I took a lot of advice from other artists and things like that. And we've got shows on how to do an art show. But um, that was how I came up with my niche. It was just, I'm going to try this, I'm going to try this. And, and I love and the I still love the fisheye stuff. I have a lot of, you've seen some of my fisheye mm -hmm. stuff at, how, at my house. And I, I love like fisheye landscapes and cityscapes and stuff like that. I still love it. But I've done better with the, the infrared. The infrared has sold better for me. And, the, and specifically infrared palm trees. They do turn out really cool. Which is really specific. It is. But that's what sells for me. And what sells interests me. <laughs> so how can, I, and I went off too much on a tangent, but how, how can somebody who maybe doesn't have that pressure that they have to do something that day, how do they figure out what their niche is if they're already taking pictures of everything under the sun? And we have a class like this. Okay. That we start off and we just say, take all your favorite pieces and put them, you know, on a, what we used to call a light box, right? Mm -hmm. You know, put them on Lightroom or, you know, whatever. It's even better. One of the things I did at one time is I, I would just take little, I don't know, what, what size is that? Two by two? Two by two. Two by two pictures and I would cut them all out and I would put them on my dining room table to start rearranging them. But let's say you're doing it in Lightroom. You're looking at the grid view and you're picking out, you know, 40 of your favorite pictures. And then from there, you usually can see what your niche is. Or you can see what you're leaning toward anyway. Right. You can look and you go, oh my God, you know, 30 of, 40 of my favorite pictures are all black and whites. Or they're all of Tuscany, or they're all, you know, and I've only been to Tuscany once, but all my favorite pictures are from Tuscany, or whatever. Right. Or, you know, one of my favorite pictures, we do the old Naples photo tour mm -hmm. during season. And uh, I took a picture of a building and put a bunch of textures over it. And I love that picture. That came out so cool with the textures. So whenever I want to get into my next niche, it's probably going to be something with textures because I like that look that Nancy Abens, who was on our yes. show, I love her look with the textures. I think that's yeah. really, really cool. So that calls to me. Mm -hmm. But if you don't know what's calling to you, look at your work and you probably have some kind of theme or look in there that you that you're just, just not need aware to of enhance it a little bit and it helps to have a second set of eyes absolutely look at it you know on our we have a full day workshop that we do, do once or twice a year called selling your photography as art here in Naples Florida and we put everybody into small groups and they all help each other because finding the niche is the hardest thing for photographers to do so you found your right. niche after you find your niche I went off too much on that, didn't I? I was all supposed right. to give you all four, wasn't I? It's okay. <laughs> Find the niche, create high impact artwork, story, you need a story for each piece and an artist statement. Those are the four. Find your niche, high impact artwork, you need a story for each piece, and you need your artist statement. All right, so we covered the niche part. Sorry, I didn't, I went off too much at the first thing. It's okay. We'll back to Slow me down. They're used to it by now. <laughs> All right, so we found our niche. We figured out, we narrowed it down. Okay, this is what I want to make. And then you need And it to has to be unique. Yes. Well, I guess that goes into the second thing, high impact. Yeah. You know, I mean, uniqueness would go into high impact, I would think. Would it go? I guess it would, yeah, mm -hmm. it would. Um, you, high impact is getting the attention of your viewer. customer, viewer, whatever. So in order to get their attention, it has to be high impact. So how do we create high impact art? And that's hard. And that's what's hard. It has to be, unique is a good word. I'm gonna bring back, go back to that. But it has to be something a little bit different than people are used to looking at. Because Which is really hard now because of Instagram. There are so many photographers posting every day because mm. that's what you need to do. 
And you're just bombarded with all of these images all the time and trying to make yourself stand out among that huge crowd of multiple hundreds of thousands of people. That's it's tough. hard. And I, I bet you anything, there's other people doing infrared palm trees out there, you know? Absolutely. But fortunately, not around here. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, okay, so high impact. Let's say, you know, first finding your, your niche, let's say your niche is, you know, a theme and a look. Okay. Um, if you think of all the themes that people have made themselves famous over, Humans of New York, um, what else? I had a whole bunch of them in my head before. Um, but people tell stories, you know, right. in, their, in their photography of, you know, the story of the Humans of New York. That guy made himself famous just doing street photography. So let's say you want to do street photography. You're going to do, you know, something similar to that. Or look at what... Um, what was that newborn photographer from Australia? She did all the babies. Ann Geddes? Yeah, Ann Geddes. I mean, she found a very unique oh, theme, yeah. right? And she ran with it. She did very well. Um, her stuff was high impact because it was different. Now, you see stuff like that every other minute. So you just have to kind of keep ahead of the curve. How do you keep ahead of the curve? You know, if, if your interest, let's say, is bird photography, then how can you do something creative? That's what you've got to think about. How can I do something a little bit unique that people haven't seen before? You know, or just a little twist on something so sometimes works. Right. And one of the, you know, like you said, the tough thing is that everybody's got their work out there, so your competition is incredible. But one of the good things that's come from all of this saturation of photographers is, Wow, the creativity is shot through the roof, man. Completely. People are coming up with stuff that blows my mind. And, you know, Karen Shulman was a guest on our show, and she came up with this. She does all photographs of reflections along with the backgrounds of the windows of Bergdorf. What is it, Bergdorf? Department store? Yeah, the one in New York City. Yeah. I mean, that's all she does. I mean, it's not all she does. She's a photographer. She goes, she does everything like we all do. But that's her. That's her That's niche. what got her to become successful in selling her artwork was that series. So she, she waits, you know, till they change their window dressings. Window mm -hmm. dressings? Yep. Windows displays, whatever. And then she'll go at different times of day because you get different reflections. You get taxi cabs. You get this, you get that, whatever. And she came up with this really interesting high-impact artwork. The first time I saw it, I was like, wow, that is cool. What is that? I thought she photoshopped something, but it's the reflection with the, uh, you know, the, the city window the display. Yeah. yeah. And some of the pictures, and they're all different. So it's really a cool idea. It is. So how that, can you come up with something like that? It's hard. I'm not it saying it's easy. But making a series, we've had a lot of guests that say, you know, Put your effort into making a series. A series one, it helps you to distinguish your look. And two, it's better for galleries and collectors and, and people like get what you're trying to do if they can see multiple things together. And it's some things don't even work without a series, like right. the humans of New York. Yeah. Like what are you gonna do, buy, buy one picture of this guy? Yeah. You'd buy a series. Exactly. We have another guy, um, Joe went on a workshop with him. His website is Abandon America. Cool. And he takes pictures of abandoned places. And he's got some really cool stuff. And you know, as photographers, we love that kind of stuff anyway. Well, he turned yeah. it into, he owns it now. Awesome. I have pictures of abandoned spaces. Joe has lots of them. That's how come he went mm -hmm. on the tour, because he loves that kind of stuff never thought to put it together and make yourself famous over it like right. he did he did a great job and is doing a great job because now he's like all over he's doing tours in romania and greece and all these other places oh, wow. yeah the next thing once we have our artwork is the story that goes with each piece why is that important how does it help sell your work 
Okay, um, I have to come up with new stories because people who listen to this all the time are sick of the stories I hear, I, I keep talking <laughs> about, I'm sure, because your story, you need to give people, okay, when somebody buys your piece, the story needs to go with them because you need to give them something to talk about when they're showing someone your piece. So if somebody bought, you know, one of my infrared palm trees, I would, maybe the story would go, oh, it was freezing cold, it was mm -hmm. windy that day, that's why you see the duh. Um, or maybe it would be like, oh, I have the specialty camera mm -hmm. that I, you know, had converted to a digital infrared and then my special processing technique. There was a guy who won, um, I think he won first place in Camera USA, which is a big national competition yes. here in Naples, Florida, but it's a national competition, so if anyone's interested, it's at the Naples Art Association, naplesart.org, Camera USA, it's $5,000 first prize. Anyway, this guy, and I don't remember his name, I don't remember anything about him, because I didn't even talk to him, but Joe talked to him. We went together to mm -hmm. see the exhibit, and, uh, he had some kind of processing technique that was so far over my head. I, that's why I didn't, Joe was talking to him, I was listening, I didn't even understand what he was <laughs> talking about. But the judges were so impressed with that. The picture was fabulous, that didn't hurt. Right. But it was some kind of, the way he printed his own picture and processed the film, it was film I think, and all, you know, it was really complicated. Now Joe was so impressed, Joe being the techie guy. But the, the judges were impressed too. And it, it helps to show how much work put, you put into it. Like how much of yourself did you put into this image? You know, in the Professional Photographers of America, one of the judging um, criteria is degree of difficulty. So putting, you know, explaining the degree of difficulty right. sometimes like I, it is didn't interesting. It did just take me five minutes to snap this picture. I put, you know, 25 hours of post-processing. I went back to the same spot every day for 25 years until right. I got this shot. Until the I light mean, was just right. So what you're doing is you're creating a story to give to your customer so that when they buy that piece, they can brag about it to their yes. friends and they can tell that story. And I'm going to tell the same story I to tell over and over that people are sick of. But Clyde Butcher is the master in marketing. He's our big photographer here in, in Florida. And the first time I, I was doing event photography at the Naples Art Association, and he was speaking. He had this huge picture. It was like eight feet tall. I don't know if I'm exaggerating, but I don't think I am. It was no, huge. It's, yeah, they're big. <laughs> and it was a picture of his enlarger, his printer, basically. And, I, and then a long story about how this is the greatest enlarger that ever lived, right? Long, I mean, you, you know, paragraphs and paragraphs uh, hanging on the wall behind plexiglass. And mm -hmm. I was like, what the heck? Why does he have this? I thought that was so stupid at the time, right? Well, sh fast forward a few years, Joe was doing a private lesson in someone's house. And Joe said, oh, you have a Clyde Butcher hanging on your wall. And he said, yeah, you should see his enlarger. And he starts telling Joe the story of the enlarger. So you've got to give the story to give to the customer because right. they, they, like, they like knowing who you are too. I went to another one of Clyde's showings not too long ago and every picture that was on the wall had a story beside it. And it was fascinating. All the stuff that went into like, you wouldn't believe how I had to do this. I had to prop up my tripod 10 feet in the air. I never saw what I was taking a picture of because I wanted to get over this foliage. You know, and you don't know that just looking at the picture, but the story behind it is really fascinating. It is, and you're giving that to the customer. Mm -hmm. You're giving the story. It's very important to give that story to the customer because you need them to, they need, they need. That's not just a picture of a palm tree. Right. You can get that on Amazon.com, you know, from or stock photography. Pick it up at Hobby Lobby. <laughs> yeah. You got, you've got to have a story that goes yeah. with it. All right, so. And that's not easy either. Nothing about this, putting together a selling, a saleable portfolio is hard. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. 
All right, so the last step of the four is the artist's statement. And, and that's kind of similar to the story of each piece, but this is the story of you and your process. Right. So that story I told you about how I became a photography artist is mm -hmm. in my artist statement. I didn't mean to become, of course, I don't mean to do anything in my life. I fall into everything. <laughs> I didn't mean to be a photographer either, but all of a sudden, here I am 20 years later, you know? <laughs> but you have to think about your process has to go into it and who you are. But it has to be really succinct, succinct and interesting to your audience. So this is what not makes, a place to ramble. <laughs> no, no. And if there is any confusion about your artwork, it's, it's not going to. You never confuse your customer. So your artist statement can say, because what I mean, a lot of people don't know what infrared photography is. Mm -hmm. So I explain that in my artist statement if I'm selling. Although I have tried to get into other niches, of the, I haven't been su successful, I haven't tried hard, but you know, the place that I'm successful, I have to explain what infrared photography is. Well, it's different. It's very different from what they're used to seeing. So they wanna know, like, what is this? How, yeah. why, is it, why are the palm trees white? We could um, do a whole show on each one of these topics. <laughs> and we might. <laughs> yeah, we might. <laughs> So things to include in your artist statement, um, just about you. It's a lot about you and your process and the emotion that you put into it and why it's important to you. And like, that, like, that, what do you mean? What could you say about that? Um, it's so much easier for me to interview than to be interviewed. <laughs> it might be like. I was working through this particular time in my life and this helped me through it and you know. There's Clyde Butcher again. Lots. His son was killed by a drunk driver and that is the first thing you see when you walk into his gallery, the story of his son and how it kind of drove him into the wilderness just to mm -hmm. kind of be alone and, and that's it's what kind of. It's that emotional connection that you want to make with your buyers. What if other they can stories? connect with you. What other stories could you say? As I told you mine, mine was like, okay, I'm an artist, what do I do? Oh my gosh, I gotta get this done for this art show. I mean, it wasn't anything glamorous. I'll tell you what not to put in there is, I got my first brownie when I was 10 years old, and then I started <laughs> photographing weddings, and then I started, nobody wants the history of your life. No. No. You gotta Clyde keep Clyde Butcher, it. if you read his artist statement, which I haven't done in a long time, but he doesn't talk about starting off in California. He doesn't talk about when he had the, um, what did he do in Ohio? He had some kind of manufacturing company or something. Yeah, I don't know. He doesn't talk about stuff like that. No. He talks about his son dying and driving him into the wilderness. And, you know, he's trying to get that emotional connection right. on, on the, the emotional part of his artwork, not just it's yeah. not just about viewing the picture. I mean, what makes artwork valuable? You know, you look at famous artwork over the years. I mean, my sister went to art school and she's, my mom's got a Monet hanging in her house. You know, it looks exactly the same as Monet's. My sister copied it because she was uh -huh. in art school. So why, is it, why was he famous and rich with a cool garden, you know? Because his style was different. It was unique and he made a name for himself. So we need to do that. We need to, we need to, we need to make a name is the hardest thing. And you make the name basically through these four, um, through steps. your, yeah, mm -hmm. through these four steps you get your portfolio together so that that's the first step. But these four steps are going to help you put together something that's going to be really meaningful. And this, to me, is the hardest part. Right. Selling your photography once you get this part done, maybe it's still easier. hard, but it's going to be a lot easier. If you don't do this part, you're going to struggle forever. So coming up with the niche, you know, you have to continually, continually push yourself to think of something unique. And then you have to stay with it. Right. Enough time to see if it's working. And how do you know what enough time is? It's not the, it's not the time, 
it's like I did five art shows and nothing sold. Or like for me, I did one art show and stuff sold. Not, not stuff, but the same stuff, right. same type of stuff. So I kind of knew immediately that that was where I was going to go. And then I try other things. And like I said, I tried with the fisheye stuff, but I didn't try that hard. I don't feel like I gave it a fair shake. Okay. I need to do, you know, several ex exhibitions or several something mm -hmm. before I really would know if something works or not. Right. So it's not, it's not time, it's effort, yeah, maybe. Experience. And, and, and putting it up on Facebook or Instagram and saying, do you got, like, you know, I got five million likes is not the same thing as selling your work. Not even close. Social media is so good and so bad because people get inflated egos about their, their followers and their likes that don't trans, transition into money. Right. And if you want to make money, you have to treat your business as a business. It's an art business. If you want to sell your work, you are a professional artist. And it's a lot of work. Nothing is easy. You're, it's not just going to be, hey, oh, I saw your painting and I love it and here's five grand. No, it doesn't work like that. Not for me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. In, in fact, you know, that our Facebook group is a great place to go and read through the comments and, and ask questions and share stories of your own. I mean, when you hear stories from other artists, it's really helpful. It is. Um, you know, how did you, you know, one person this morning or yesterday, I can't remember, said, I sold my first Piece. I said, well, how are you going to follow up? He said, I don't know who bought it because it was sold through a gallery. Mm, I'm going to push the guy a little bit. He's still the gallery. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. sure they kept a record of who gave them money. <laughs> and maybe they don't want you to, maybe they don't want this artist to follow up directly with a customer. Maybe they're that kind of gallery that hides the customer. But you still follow up with a gallery. Exactly. Yeah, there's always a follow up. Anyway, that's, I'm getting off, off, off subject. <laughs> All right. Um, another thing about the artist's statement is you can have someone help you. Like, make it a third-party thing. Have somebody say, oh, well, this is what I really like about your stuff. Sometimes you need a, another opinion. Okay, what do you, let's, let's, let's stretch, stretch that. that. What do you mean by that? All right. Artists, we get really attached to our own work. Yes. And we have a really hard time stepping back to look at it from a different perspective. And sometimes it's real nice to bring a friend or a partner or a kid or whoever in and say, okay, this is what I've got so far. What do you think? Does and it work for me? That could go with every single Every single part point. of it, yeah. Because we talked about doing that with the niche. But with the artist statement, I'll tell you what the one thing happens though, because I, I decided that I was going to go back to score for some business counseling. I went once 10, 11 years ago when I first started the training center, and I wasn't real happy. It's a volunteer organization, Service Corps of Retired Executives. Executives. Oh, you looked it up? Well, or it did was you only a couple know? shows ago. <laughs> oh, anyway. <laughs> anyway. Um, so I thought, well, I'm just going to try because I'm, you know, again, thinking about different things in my business. And so in preparation for this meeting coming up, I'm really organizing my thoughts and organizing all the options I have that they've been out there, but I haven't put them together. So for instance, when you're doing your artist statement, if you know someone's going to look at it, and critique it, you're probably going to be a lot better at putting it together or putting options of what you should put in there together. And maybe that's a good way to do it. Just start brainstorming. Write like everything you can think of that could go into your, that could possibly go into your artist statement. Like a, just a, like a dump, like a brain mm -hmm. dump, you know, write every single thing, even the when you got your first brownie type of stuff. Then you have it all out there, just like I said, to, to, for your portfolio or for your finding your niche. Put all your pictures out there and start moving them around and taking them out. You could do the same thing with your artist statement. You know, make make all these broad 
things about different emotional things that have happened that have have, have, have affected your art mm -hmm. different technical things that are going on you know in your artwork even stuff like you know for for I have I had a, a an Airbnb guest at my house who checked out today and he has a podcast oh crap now I'm gonna forget the name of it through autistic eyes cool so some of the stuff he talks about are the challenges that he, as an autistic person, has gone, has gone, through, have mm -hmm. gone through, has has gone through. So you could, you could put some of your, you know, I grew up in Uganda as a dirt poor person and realized I had a creative streak or whatever, you right. know, or you know, I, I grew up in Detroit and got beat up every day and art was my release. That kind of stuff is interesting to people. It is. Or, you know, for me, I talk about the struggle I had learning photography. I, I, I don't talk about that in my artist statement, but I do talk about that in all my classes, and people really relate to me. Yes. Because a lot of people love photography, but have trouble with the technical side. And so did I. So you're bringing a relatable thing to your customer. And then you put all that stuff out, and then you bring your other person in, like you said, yeah. and start saying, okay, here's all my components. Help me put this together as one really good artist statement. And it doesn't have to be super long. We can't, fact, it can't be super long. Short is better. And we're get, we have another show coming up about good copywriting and how to make everything precise. Yeah, actually, so. and the way we found that guest was I took a class from her and it was really good because you know I'm always writing for the blog and my newsletter and da da da, da and I want to be better at it. I want to come up with better headlines. I want to come and so and it was a really good class. Final tips for creating a selling portfolio. Well, I'm just going to summarize rather than okay. final tips. Okay, we talked about finding your niche. That is tough. It is. Find your niche and find, you know, we had T Tomas Mitchell on the show, mm -hmm. and I just picked at him, let's find your niche. So we talked and talked and talked, and he actually came up with two ideas, not one, but two ideas for two different niches. And that was from a website that had 5,000 pictures on it. I might be exaggerating, right. but he had a lot of different things on his website. So he came up with two ideas, and we're going to follow up soon, right? Yes. Follow up with him to see what he came up with. So. I mean, if you can't come up with one, come up with two, and then see what happens. But at least narrow it down from the 30 that you've currently yep. got. So find your niche. Number two, high impact artwork. How are you gonna make this high impact? Okay, what if your niche is bird photography? Oh my gosh, there's five billion bird photographers. What are you gonna do to make it unique? You've got to think about that. Number three, a story for each piece every single now um, as you know because you helped me with this last year I was selected to be one of the artists for the artist studio tour which is a mm -hmm. big deal here in Naples and I wrote a little I made a little book and I made a couple copies because it was expensive <laughs> <laughs> I didn't make too many copies but I they had docents from the museum come and I gave each docent a little book that had my artist or my story for each picture. Well, you know, as you know, my house is an Airbnb. Right. And I leave that little booklet out, and you cannot believe the interest I get from my guests. They read that booklet and they look at my artwork and they're like, oh my gosh, this is so interesting. And people really, really like to know the story for each piece. And then, of course, number four is your artist statement. And we talked at length about that. Mm -hmm. Okay, niche. High impact artwork, story for each piece, artist statement. Perfect. So what's coming up next for you, Peggy? Well, you know, we're, we're going into our off season here in, in Naples, Florida. <laughs> so I'll be doing some traveling. But um, starting in, oh gosh, well, our, our, our September trip to South Africa is sold out. But in December, we'll be having a ladies only trip to Mount Dora, Florida. If you've never heard of it, it is this adorable little town north of Orlando. It's, um, 
you know, it's an old Victorian town. We stay in a really cute bed and breakfast. We go on a boat tour in the chain of lakes. We do, it's really fun. We do a lot of night photography, not stars because it's too bright there, but like streaking lights and all kinds of stuff. So we go in fun. December, so we, we're there when the lights are all lit up for Christmas. So it's really, really Pretty. fun. That's in December. In January, we've got our Everglades tours coming up. Um, you know, that's kind of what we're known for. We live here on the edge of the Everglades, and we are one of the few photography companies who actually has a permit to legally take people out <laughs> into the Everglades and teach them. So we've been doing that for, I don't even know how many years, many, many, many years. In fact, we actually, um, Joe actually helps some of the other photographers who do Everglades tours. He puts their tours together for them. So. Um, that's kind of what we do more than anything and we will have more trips but I, we don't have them all planned as of yet but keep you know stay tuned on our website at understandphotography.com click on well click on anything everything's pretty easy to use on our website but if you go to understandphotography.com and then click on schedule you can see what we have coming up month to month day to day of course the four weeks to proficiency in photography online class we offer that about every six weeks and that is an interactive online class. And that's kind of the kind of it, you know, we spend the summers planning for the next season. Mm -hmm. To our audience, thank you so much for joining us on the Understand Photography Show. Um, again, the reviews really help us. If you would like to donate to help us keep this show going, it's been a labor of love for almost four years, but it doesn't make money, and we need to, to make some money at this point. <laughs> I'm Peggy Farron. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next week. Get up.